My friend Lee messaged me on Facebook um, a few weeks ago now, and he was just getting into photography and asking if I had any resources so that he could learn about composition. And I didn't really know what to say at the time. I, I didn't really, it was hard to pin down where I'd kind of learned a composition from. I think it most likely would have been YouTube videos, like uh, a lot of things I picked up about photography. And But more than that is that the things I'd learned about composition or, you know, the rules had kind of been absorbed into uh, the way that I naturally approach a scene, approach a, 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 you know, a composition and then kind of not just absorb them, but individuated them. So look at, you know, how do I like to, to, to apply certain rules? But I guess when I kind of reflect on, on what I do and, and this week I've been out shooting some photographs and thinking about composition and it's made me more, more aware of the things that I actually am following, which although become more of an intuitive sort of response to the scene, do have some sort of basis in like rules or uh, prescriptions for photography. I think one of the, the biggest one or the one that drives the most in my composition is, is contrast. I think that's what drives, the contrast is, is I think what, what attracts people the most. And you might naturally assume that I'm talking about contrast in terms of light and darkness, and I am to some extent, but that's an example of, of contrast. But when I speak about in ordinary life, it's like the cliche on the movies where the girl likes the the bad guy who's got a really sensitive side. It's that contrast between his tough exterior and his soft interior. Or conversely, you know, someone who's really perhaps comes across a bit of a washover in the film and then at the ultimate moment he steps up and you know it's like uh, what's he called out of back to the future marty mcfly's dad when he he finally smacks biff in the, in the face it's uh it's a really attractive thing to see those those contrasts in those two different um personalities i think people naturally gravitated towards contrast because there's a tension in it that even if it's a, a, a static photo and there's some contrast in there, be it light or be it color or be it strong shapes, you know, rigid shapes and, and water or something like that, is that it creates this sort of tension that's attractive to us. So yeah, I think if I were to give some advice on how to improve your composition, I'd start with contrast. So look at a scene and this can be light and dark. That's a really nice way to get into exploring contrast and perhaps go out and take your camera and look for shadows, look for silhouettes, look for harsh, um, these harsh lights like in the Fan Ho photography type style and just concentrate on an aspect and think of contrast and then go out and say, well, today I'm going to explore contrast in terms of light and shadow or light and dark. And then once you've done that, you can maybe think, okay, well, maybe I'm now I look at color and I look at the contrast in color. So, you know, really warm colors like orange or red and really cold colors like blue or to a lesser extent green. And can I take a, a picture where it contrasts these two colors? So, you know, maybe something like if you're on a beach and it's nice warm sand, but the, the sky is a bright blue, then you've got a contrast there. And you can keep drilling down into uh, lots of different types of contrast. So, I mean, you can, I, I took a picture recently, if you look on my Facebook, uh, sorry, my Instagram, it's a picture of an old man on a mobility scooter outside a cafe that's closed. And in the, in the original, there's a sign on the window that says closed due to lockdown, I think. And then in brackets, it says, sorry. But in, in that photo, I, originally on the inside of the shop, it wasn't that bright. But I made that really nice and colourful and there's these beautiful oranges and beautiful reds and these uh, old fashioned type orange lights that are hanging down. And I used like a graduated filter and I brushed over that and I made that really saturated and light and nice and inviting. And then to contrast that, there's the old guy sat outside and he's drinking a cup of coffee and his hands are blue and it's really cold and shadowy on the outside. And then you've got this sign, you know, shut due to the lockdown, which is obviously 
there to, to, to help vulnerable people the most. So there's, a, there's, a, there's another contrast, there's a contrast in a sort of a, a political contrast or socio-political contrast in that as well. And then the, the contrast in the warmth on the inside works well with that because, you know, he's being denied from from the warmth of the inside is outside. So there's, there's levels you can go, but I think if you start to think of contrast as a whole and then break that down into different parts, um, that's a really good way to to start to think about composition. And there's other things you, you move on to then framing, um, which I'll talk about perhaps in another time. And I also, this was the same photo walk. I was in Blackpool and I saw this picture of this. My sister saw him first. There was an old guy, again on a mobility scooter, just kind of on the on the side of the of the promenade, just looking out into the sea. And you can see this kind of the, the sea sort of butting up against the the sand and this old guy just kind of staring out into it. And this was another application of contrast is that you had this sort of vast vista in front of him of the of the sea and the sand and the sky and it was all kind of soft soft hues and the guy was just staring out inside and you had contrast between the the vast expanse of the background and then this small um, guy just in the corner and what me and my sister immediately noticed about this scene was the the sense of loneliness and so the reason why I use that contrast of the, the vast expanse with the, the small scale of the old guy was to capture that, that sense of loneliness. So use, use this idea of contrast to, to motivate you to go out and to discover things. And then once you've, you've built an appreciation of contrast and you've learned to see it in different ways, then it, it doesn't become a a rule as much but a tool in your arsenal so you know when you see a scene you can think could I use contrast in such a way that that when the photo comes out that it looks exactly how I want it to to, to sit to be and the mood that I want to capture and so if my friend were to ask me again I should I guess I should just message send him this this recording but yeah the best thing you can do for your composition is to start to look for contrast.